In this video, I'm going to show you my favorite way to make wax seals, and you won't have any soot to deal with. Now, before I show you how to make these wax seals my favorite way, I'm going to show you the traditional way first, because that's the easiest and that's the most common way that people make wax seals. Some of the items on screen are from a kit I bought on Amazon. The three stamp seals at the top of the screen in silver, gold, and rose gold, the metal plate with the wooden, spoon, wooden knob, the tea light candle, and the spoon came in one kit. It also came with some wax beads that I won't be using in this video. So these wax beads are from a completely different packet that I bought. The two stamp seals on the left side of the screen are also individual purchases I made on Amazon as well. And all items that you see me use will be linked in the description box below. I wanted to show you this portion of the video before I get to my favorite way to make wax seals is because I have some tips and pointers. So I shot this video quite a while ago and some of the things I wanted to share with you are tools that I find are super, super helpful. Now I've seen people use like toothpicks or craft sticks to um, push the wax around like I'm doing with this one, but I love this particular tool because it has a silicone tip and nothing ever sticks to it. So you'll see me melt wax, you'll see me stir it around, but nothing sticks to this. And when this wax dries and cools on the tip, you can simply pull that off and melt it again, or you can put it back in the box with the other pieces of beads. And when I say beads, I'm actually referring to the wax beads because that's what they're called. So you can see I'm scraping off the silicone tool into the spoon with the wax and I've got a, quite a bit of wax on it but I'm not concerned about that because I can actually reuse that once the wax cools on that spoon and it dries. I found two tips that are super helpful when you melt wax to make the seals. Number one is to make sure you put your spoon very close to the surface that you're pouring it on. Right here I'm putting it on a silicone mat that's non-stick and my spoon is very close and did you see that I just twisted the spoon over? That's so I don't have to get any drips on the side of the spoon and deal with that. So I just basically put the wax stamp on top of that wax that's melted and let it sit there. Now, once the wax has cooled and set up, look at this. This is super, super cool. This is a 3D bumblebee stamp seal, and I will have all of this linked in the description box below, but I love the detail on that. Now, here's an example of the wax that has dried on the tip of that silicone, and notice it just slips off, and I can put it right back in the spoon to remelt that wax and use it again on another stamp seal. This time I'm just adding some blue uh, wax beads and I'm gonna stir this around to kind of mix it up together. While I'm doing that, this is one of the reasons I don't like working with the traditional wax seals, using candles and all that sort of thing. That metal plate that you see there with the candle um, underneath it, that thing, even though there's a wooden handle on to the right side, that thing gets extremely hot. And I burned myself a couple of times and noticed the black soot everywhere. I was just going bonkers. Part of me wanted to just say, you know what, wax seals are not for me. My hands got dirty. I got that soot, you can see it all over my mat. Um, this is another stamp seal I'm gonna be using. And I just couldn't win with this. Then the wax um, candle, the tea light started to ooze candle wax everywhere. It was just a mess. Um, in any case, I just decided, you know what, I just, I don't think I'm going to like this wax sealing thing if I have to get my hands so dirty. Um, and it was just really a mess. That soot on the back of the spoon is terrible. And I just couldn't win. One of the tips I learned from artists who make wax seals all the time professionally is to take your stamp seals and put them in a glass of um, ice or put them on a super cold surface. That way the stamp comes off really quickly from the wax seal. And you saw how quickly I did that one. So that's one of the tips, I, another tip that I wanted to pass along to you that I thought was cool. But when you stick around with me towards the tail end, I'm gonna show you my favorite way to make wax seals and I'll share another tip with you that I think you'll find pretty helpful. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for spending some time with me. If you've learned a thing or two in this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing if you don't wanna miss the next time I upload a new video. It's great to have you here. 
This next stamp seal is a 3D butterfly and it's just beautiful. So I'm gonna show you one more stamp seal using this method of melting the wax beads and then on to my new favorite way to do this craft. Again, when you pour the wax, bring your spoon nice and low and then rotate the spoon so you minimize drips on the edge. That makes now for take easier a look cleanup. At this stamp. This is so, so beautiful. I love the bumblebee and I really love this butterfly. There is so much detail in here and you can really bring it out if you use like a gilding wax or I'm gonna be using a pen. I'm gonna show you a couple of pens that I bought, but it's really wonderful. Okay, on to my favorite way to do this craft now. So I'm gonna show you these wax beads that I picked up. Um, this is the one where I used the candle, but the wax beads that I was using throughout the video are in this box. And they come in little kit, um, and I really enjoyed this. It also came with the candles, and I don't like the candles, but the beads are great. So I found this little wax melting gadget on Amazon, and they call it an electric furnace. It's kind of a funny name. Um, and I thought it was hilarious, but I wanted to try this out before I shared it with you. And it comes with a spoon. It has a long cord that plugs into an outlet. It has an on-off switch and a light indicator to tell you when it's heated to the correct melting temperature. Now, this is great because it keeps consistent temperature and the wax will not burn. It also came with these tweezers, the spoon that you see in the well, and it also comes with a spatula to kind of help clean out the spoon reservoir when you're finished. So here is the, the silicone spoon to clean out the me metal spoon once you're finished. I didn't really care for it. I did try it and I'm not a huge fan, so I just use one of my silicone spatulas that I have on hand. Now here's the trick. See, this is an ice pack and it's frozen and I have it on a piece of paper towel and all my wax seals are just sitting on top of it. That keeps them nice and cold so that when you're ready to do your wax seals, you can stamp and then release almost immediately. It works really, really well. And I don't wanna bore you by making you watch melt, uh, wax melt, but in the interest of explaining why I like this particular way of doing wax seals so much is because there's really no dirt. There is a well underneath the spoon that you see there. There's a little kind of a, I don't know if you can see it at the very top of the sp uh, spoon, uh, looking north basically, I would say at the top of your screen. There's a little tiny little lip that holds that spoon in place so that it doesn't tip over. So that's one really good feature. The other feature is underneath that spoon is a Teflon coating. So if you do happen to spill wax on that, you will be able to get that out because it's nonstick. Now I was just showing you an example of this particular tool that also has a silicone tip, but I wind up switching over to the blue one because it's longer and it's much more easy to manipulate. So here's my wax already melted, and I would say that it takes probably the exact same amount of time as when you're using a candle, so just bear that in mind. But I think the really big bonus feature is having no soot to deal with, and yes, you still have to clean out the spoon once you're finished doing the wax melts, but I really love the fact that it's much cleaner, there's no smoke, there's no soot, and none of the dirt I'm sorry, none of the soot that you get on the back of your spoon when you use traditional candle wax to melt your wax beads. You don't have to deal with that soot getting all over your hands and potentially messing up some of your projects like I did. Now look at this beautiful design. This is a square stamp seal that I found on Amazon and it's not 3D, but the design is absolutely beautiful and I will show that to you once I use some pens on it to really bring out the detail of that particular stamp. So for those of you wondering if this tool gets hot, yes, it does get hot to the touch, but it's not so hot that you will burn your fingers. You just don't wanna let them sitting on there for a while. But yes, it does get pretty warm, so that's why my silicone mat is helping me um, so that I don't have to deal with anything underneath it burning. But yes, it does get hot just like any candle wax would, and you just wanna make sure you use caution when you use this particular tool. So I'm a fan of doing wax seals since I've discovered this little electric tool. It is gonna be my go-to. I will not be using the traditional wax uh, melting method by using a tea light candle or a candle of any sort just because of the soot. That's the thing that bugs me the most. <laughs> um, but anyway, this just works like any other um, 
traditional wax melting thing, except it's electric. And so that's the bonus. And, you know, just like you see me doing on screen here by cutting up pieces of a wax seal that I didn't like or just didn't melt properly or or I didn't do the stamp seal properly, you can just melt it and put it right back in and just retry until you get it to the way that you want. Now the square stamp seals that I'm using are new to me as well too, and I found those on Amazon. Again, everything will be linked below or a comparable type product. Um, but I really enjoy this craft. Um, tell me what you like about it or if you don't think you would try it. Because I know not everybody's into like stitching on cards. Maybe this is not your deal either. Um, but here's this, the silicone um, tool to clean out the spoon that it was just, that was kind of a little bit awkward and messy for me. So I will probably just use one of my own spatulas, but you see it cleaned out nicely. Now, as I'm recording this, the warm, the wax warmer that you see me using here, the electric warmer, is currently on Amazon, and the price is listed at $11.99 US. Um, so that's what it's going for right now. They do sell a bigger kit that includes some wax seal beads. I didn't buy those because on the right-hand side of your screen is a kit that I already purchased for myself. So I already had wax beads, and I didn't want to buy another set of those, so I just bought the wax seal. It's the wax seal warmer itself. So I didn't feel the need to pick up more wax beads. So here's a close up of the sunflower. And again, see right here is the switch I was talking about. There's an on off switch you can use to turn off the warmer. So if you have to take off, like go pick up your kids from school or run an errand or go downstairs and make another pot of coffee or something, you can turn it off and be rest assured that it's not going to catch anything on fire. I usually just completely unplug mine altogether because I keep everything in a box with all my wax beads and all of the stamp seals, everything in one little box so that I can have everything together. So here's where things get really fun. I actually took some pens that are silver and gold. One is a broad tip, the other one is a fine tip. Um, they have one of each pen, and these pens are pretty amazing. They give off the most amazing mirror-like shine. I think the silver does a better job, in my humble opinion, than the gold, but they're both beautiful, and they bring out such beautiful details in these wax seals. I have to apologize because I didn't realize I was so on the lower part of the screen and not quite in the center so you could see me put this pen on to the wax seal stamp. Um, but I'll show you a close up at the end so you can get an idea of how it turned out once I was done and use it on a card project. So I went nuts with all these wax seals and I made so many of them, they're so fun. There's even a technique where you can actually use a hot glue stick and put it on a piece of paper. Make sure your glue sticks are completely clear so you can see the paper behind, but that bumblebee, the silver and the bluish one that you see there, oh my gosh, that's that's my favorite, I think. I love bumblebees in general. So let's take a look at the two cards that I finished making. I actually made four, a couple of them are off screen right, to, right now too, but I used an embossing folder just to kind of give a little bit of depth and dimension to the background. And I couldn't find a piece of blue cardstock, but what I did was I took a magic marker, like a magic marker, um, a, an alcohol marker, and just did a border and colored that in so that I could pick up the blue and the same for the red. And I used on this one, I used a, a cover plate that I recently purchased. And I love the subtle design that that gives. And I certainly love the, um, the stamp seal. I just think they're so beautiful. And I'm going to be saving the sentiments for either the inside or I'll put them on the top once I'm finished and ready to decide who I'm going to send that to. But these are examples of the cards I made where the stamp seal is the star of the show. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, uh, don't forget to give me a like and a thumbs up um, and share with your friends if you'd like. Anyway, thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed. I will talk to you soon and see you again in the next video. Ciao for now.